Okay, welcome to Guyan Web Browsers for 11th of uh, March 2020. Um, this week, this is like a breaking news. The breaking news is the PR with uh, gateway subdomains and HTTP proxy got merged three minutes ago. <laughs> uh, so, so I expect overall, like the, the general shape will not change that much when it will be released in Go uh, 0.5. Um, so I got an agenda here and uh, the first one was IPFS desktop, but this is like a breaking news, so. <laughs> Uh, is uh, I, just just a just a uh, step back before we move away on from the breaking news. Is this your first major feature that you've added to Go IPFS? Actually, I think so because uh, I got PRs merged before, but those were mostly like bug, bug fixes, and I've added a lot of tests for cores on the uh, HTTP gateway because it, the the cores logic got changed uh, before across the refactors and I just wanted to safeguard that we don't have any regressions there. But yeah, this is like pretty big for me. Uh, the biggest uh, PR Congratulations. against Go IPFS, um, which was pretty, pr pr pretty fun given that I'm doing this uh, Go, Go curriculum in, in parallel at the snail speed, but at least I wrote some Go. Um, that's it for about me. Let's let's just quickly reiterate uh, why does this matter? This matters because it adds additional mode uh, to HTTP gateway, the HTTP interoperability layer that Go IPFS uh, exposes, and which can be queried by uh, an HTTP client, including web browsers. And this specific change is. Uh, the main consumer of this will be a web browser. So uh, why do we need subdomains? Uh, we need subdomains for origin isolation on HTTP gateway. So until we got a native protocol handler or native IPFS support in web browsers, we need to use gateways as that intermediate step. And the problem with that is uh, entire web security context uh, is based on the origin. Origin is protocol, host name, and port, usually. Uh, and if you use IPFS IO, you get uh, you get uh, the one uh, one origin. So everything under gateway will share cookies, share data store, subdomain gateways. Solve that by creating a separate sandbox per content route and realigning the web security model with the way we represent IPFS uh, content routes uh, on the gateway. So that will be uh, an opt-in. Uh, people will be able to define uh, subdomain mode for a specific host name. Here is an example. There's a public subdomain gateway at the web link. Uh, and this is like an example how this how that g public gateway would be could be uh, run using this new uh, Go IPFS uh, feature. Um, everything is opt-in apart from the one change we've done for a local host. So at the local host, you are able to run gateway on the the IP port. So you got one one to seven eighty eighty right and IPFS something. Um, so that remains unchanged. It works as it did before. However, now if you go to, uh, if you use localhost hostname, uh, then this request will continue to work, but in the web browser, it will be redirected to a subdomain version. And uh, next step will be me uh, adding support to IPFS compile. Hopefully that will land uh, at the end of this week. So that's just a teaser. I don't want to derail this call uh, with subdomains once again, but it's like we are getting there. Um, this, for, for, for browsers world, I mean, this, this is a, it's a huge turning point. Like it, this, it's one of, the, one of the changes that is required for us to be able to 
turn the project from experimental and prototype and things like that to like this as a, a the expected and production level of security that browser vendors will expect. Yeah, and it, it removes a lot of complexity. Uh, there will be like probably as the entire blog post uh, with uh, all the details. Uh, it's, it's just uh, pretty exciting uh, to see it uh, land. Speaking about like exciting stuff, IPFS desktop by past uh, macOS notarization. I believe I did not mention it uh, last week. It was like work in progress last week. Uh, so if anyone is using uh, macOS Catalina or, or later, uh, then now you no longer need to uh, deal with this error. Instead, you, you, you have an option to, to run it, which is good. We want people to be able to install IPFS desktop. Uh, so yeah, once again, big thank you to, to, to Dietrich and to Oli uh, for helping on the macOS side, because I'm not a Mac user. And it's pretty difficult to fix issues on Mac without having one. <laughs> Um, all right. Um, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll ship you one in a heartbeat. Tell you. <laughs> I, I will, I will make this as easy as it can be. They don't make them in the black color. Uh, I need like dark. I, I, I get a sharpie. I can... <laughs> all right. I think about it. Um, the next item is something. I sort of mentioned on the previous call, but it feels uh, topical for GUI and web browsers one uh, about IPNS resolution in web browser. Uh, so it's something I was not fully aware that was the current situation. So uh, folks from Terminal, they are experimenting with uh, mutability in a web browser. And the problem was they were not, they are not able to resolve IPNS uh, addresses, mutable uh, paths in web browser. And that's mostly because it turns out, uh, Vasco just checked uh, an hour ago, uh, w the current implementation is like hard coded bound to like ex implementation of DHT. And we probably could, and we don't have DHT in JS IPFS yet. Um, however, we have uh, delegated routing modules when you can uh, like delegate a DHT queries effectively, not like specifically DHT, but just like routing. You can do content routing queries and uh, peer routing queries. Uh, uh, like JS IPFS can delegate them to some Go IPFS, uh, which exposes uh, HTTP API endpoints, basically. Um, there are like even default uh, delegate servers provided at IPFS IO gateway. Uh, if someone wants to like try, uh, the problem is even if you set them up, uh, it's still uh, at the low, lowest level. Uh, the data stores used for IPNS uh, uh, record safekeeping uh, are bound to the DHT. So I feel we probably will have to. Uh, fix this uh, to unlock uh, use of IPNS in web browser, um, which probably will be useful now that we have delegated routing. It, I, I believe no one cared about this because we had no DHT and there were no other means. Uh, but now that we have delegated routing, uh, it makes sense to, to make it work. So that might be something for Q2, because uh, I feel it's impactful because it's a very uh, the low level primitive uh, right now, immutable content works. The problem is mutability, IPNS. Uh, so that's like a very low level primitive that we are missing in the web browser context. Uh, yeah, Pashko. Uh, yeah, just one thing. Uh, so basically, uh, supposing that everything will work, which I think it should. Just shifting uh, uh, libp2.dht for libp2.content routing. Basically, we would only have to uh, change the config for browser in, uh, for libp2.p to use the content routing nodes, which I, I think currently it's not using by default. But I think with that, it shouldn't, if it's uh, like everything works. Immediately, it should be like a, a day of work or something. It should be pretty easy. 
I yeah. can even own it uh, next quarter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, one unknown uh, is uh, at, the, at the level when you uh, ask for peers and you get, or when you ask about uh, peer addresses and you get those addresses back, uh, those usually be, will be TCP addresses. I'm not sure. It feels like there's like a missing step. We may be needing so, sort of like a relay mechanism for dialing those TCP ones if we want to truly, truly unlock uh, this delegated routing. Because uh, right now it's kind of limited. You ask DHT for peer ID uh, or uh, like wh which peer IDs have this content? You get peer IDs. Then, okay, what are addresses of those peer, of this peer ID? And you get TCP address, which you cannot dial from web browser, right? Uh, yeah. But that's yeah. like for uh, something to think uh, about. But I feel it's a useful thing to put on our roadmap for uh, Q2. Uh, yeah. um, next one is Peer Store. So, yeah, I can share my screen if I find the correct window. Uh, for improvements. Um, I'll just share the, the desktop. Oh. I can share. Uh, can you just open the issue and share the screen? Because I don't have permissions and I need to restart the Zoom to make it happen. <laughs> Uh, you are muted, Leo. Yeah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's me. <laughs> yeah. Can you just open the issue yep. and scroll to the milestones thing? Yeah, basically this issue contains, uh, that's good. Thank you. Uh, this issue contains all the stuff that we discussed in the IPFS team week uh, regarding uh, uh, the opportunities and everything that you we can achieve from uh, the refactor of uh, beer store basically uh, we have been uh, discussing after uh, the team week how we should uh, schedule the the work me and jacob and basically we decided to uh, through something like the the five milestones that we we get there the basically the the first three should shouldn't be blocked now and uh, i can immediately start to work on them and that's where i'm currently starting to do while I'm waiting for feedback on Stardust. So basically the three of the, the first three, we don't only provide for uh, the two, the first two are just basically refactoring and there will be no bigger gains, but it will unblock the, the remaining ones. And the, the third one will be the first one that will really bring improvements for the browser. That's when we will get uh, back to peer store and uh, then of course, in K, the mem data store will be the default, but if uh, a, the user provides, or I suppose JSIPFS will provide, so in JSIPFS it will be just the, the default, um, the, the data store for the browser, and basically you will get uh, the peers that you already know available since you start, and you don't need to go and discover new peers once again. Uh, so that will be the first gain. After that, the fourth and fifth milestones are basically the things that will as in the lipid p side, we'll need to discuss with the Go lipid p team as well and create the specs, which are basically uh, the multi other confidence, uh, which basically will also be cool for the browsers because the goal here is to kind of score the multi others that we know of appear according to the multi others that we believe are better to dial. And uh, because first, now, now we are basically blindly dial in parallel but we are limiting also the parallel dials that we can do and uh, basically we can start for dialing imaginatively the first three multi others but the coolest multi others could be the fourth or the, fi or the fifth and uh, basically we'll need to discuss and decide a scoring thing to make a multi other confidence approach and also uh, those multi others should have a, a time to live and we'll should like evaluate once in a while if we should uh, uh, improve them or not. There are a lot of notes that we got about it, 
but it's still like a, a discussing discussing stage so far. And uh, with that, we also want to do the peers priority thing, which basically will interact with um, a connection manager in order to trim properly the connection that we have in the event of having too many connections open, which now is a problem basically just to close them almost with no logic. It's just, uh, if I'm not wrong, we have some metrics, but it's just like almost blindly trim connections. And uh, these scores plus the multi-other scores, and uh, we are also considering the protocols because for example, if we have a peer running PubSub, uh, this peer will have uh, more priority to know other peers which are running uh, PubSub. So the score eventually for this, those peers will be higher, but uh, it's also a work in progress to define how we'll de decide the priority of peers. And that's it for now on the peer store land. Thank you. That's super useful. Uh, especially I, I'm excited about like multi other confidence and, and improvements around connection manager. Uh, for a bit of background in, in the Brave browser, if you switch to embedded JS APFS node, that node has access to TCP uh, transport. Uh, and also we run uh, delegated routing modules there. Uh, and I like, sort of like use connection manager just to limit I believe it's hard coded to 50 connections just to keep a browser happy uh, and don't kill browser extension if it runs uh, too many or eats too many resources. Uh, but it's been like always kind of sketchy the way it manages, uh, like the, it manages connections. So it's super useful to, uh, to improve that. I, I had a couple of questions for these. Uh, what's the kind of big time frame for this first three milestones? Uh, the, I think the three milestones should be uh, pretty fast. At least I, I would expect them to land maybe middle Q2. Uh, the other two, I would expect to at least have a, a decision by the end of Q2 and uh, I, I will already eventually start working on them so that uh, uh, in Q3, like beginning, middle, we should have all of that. Okay. For the... Um... I'd, I'd love to have a, a clear idea of, you know, I'm reading through the goals here and I see like within the context, it sounds like it might be performance related, but it would be great to be able to have a summary of exactly which parts this makes faster. For example, uh, does this make faster reconnections? Like which, uh, like we're looking at somebody loads a web page, which exact bits would be faster when they start making transfers or if it's initial peer, peer co collection mm -hmm. and things like that? It's in initially, it's basically the initial setup of the node. There is, it will be faster for the persistence peer store itself because basically we'll just start and uh, already know the peers instead of like needing to wait. Because right. for example, in the in the centralized parts like WebRTC, Star Server, and the other signaling servers, uh, we would need to make this initial jump and oh. gather the discovered nodes yeah. and then go while you would have immediately all of them. The other, the, so, the last, init the last so initial connection, if you load a new page and you've yeah. already made a connection from that page before, you hit reload or whatever, or anything that would blow away cache or anything like that. Yeah, okay. that will be for the third milestone. The fourth and the fifth are mostly related with the dial performance. And uh, is this, is this, is the plan to, is the plan to, back this data persistent in our existing local IPFS repo and data store. Yeah. So then if, if somebody does something like um, either clear private data or they do, or we hit the storage quotas, it'll all get blown away with the rest of the repo. I think so. Okay. I know, I know that uh, Hugo was uh, talking a, a earlier about uh, uh, how we could improve the browser data store, but I'm not sure how it's the status of that thing. I think yeah. we didn't discuss any further. But yeah, uh, we've, we've, we've poked a little bit at some of these problems. And that's why I'm kind of like, okay, yeah. like we have this, we don't really have a separation between like system metadata like this and the actual data that the user is stored. I feel like, like, we sh like the policies around like killing user data are should probably be different for these things. But if they're all stored in the repo, they can all get at any time 
uh, with that, especially if, if, if another app hits the, you know, a totally entirely different domain, whatever, hits the storage quota, then all this stuff goes away as well, because we don't present data at this point. Um, so I've, it's just good to know where we have these dependencies on other large system level changes that we need to figure out, like especially around storage quota. It makes sense, yeah. But this this seems I'm less worried about blowing away this data because you can recollect it every time. It'll just be like the status quo, right? Uh, yeah. it, but it's good good to good to know. For example, yeah, I wonder if like if if we actually did things like persistent storage, we still might even want this in non-persistent storage. Yeah. Yep. Uh, adding an option for like web developer to define in JSIPFS config where in, in what type of uh, storage they want to keep uh, repo or basically like keep everything because there's no like this detection. If you ask for persistence, then you probably want to store persist everything. Um, yeah. Uh, do we have, yeah, that's a good question. Do we have an issue about like exposing that parameter? I don't think like Hugo started working on performance improvements, but we don't have an issue. That's like an action item for me to create an issue. <laughs> One second. Um, this is awesome though. I wonder if we could get, I'm trying to think of like, who would be people who would help us out with some uh, like telemetry or metadata around initial like node and peer instantiation time. So like people like three box, um, people who have like larger deployments, maybe even orbit to be folks who might be able to do some and be able to like, let us know like how, just how big is this change? Like it would be given all this work. Um, one thing that I would recommend too is setting up some initial metrics so that even in our tests, we can do a measurement of like, just how much does this matter? Like, set up a couple of different nodes in different geographic regions and then see how much a cold start with no peer, peer backing at all, that, how long that takes to get to say 100 peers or whatever, and then do stuff with warm start where it's the data is back to be able to measure what that difference is. Yeah, also, also maybe for uh, the test ground, we could, uh, um, it wouldn't be geographically, but we could, uh, benchmark how it is now and then uh, we would benchmark how it is the second time it boots. Uh, yeah, that would be rad. Yeah, can can you add some some measurement or metric bit to the plan for this? So I think this would be a great story to tell like just how much we're improving the performance of, um, especially if people are building web applications with it, where people are going to keep coming back to the same domains over and over. Sure, I will add it. It's be it's awesome. Thank you. Real valuable. Awesome. Uh, next one, I suspect it's Citrix. Uh, yeah. Um, so uh, when when uh, Arakli is no longer working on LibDWeb at Mozilla, uh, he moved the LibDWeb project over to a separate org on on GitHub. So now it's LibDWeb slash LibDWeb instead of Mozilla slash LibDWeb. Um, and the, really the only person that, that's been doing active development on it for some time is Sam Macbeth. Sam Macbeth works for a Clix browser in Germany, and he actually shipped LibDWeb inside the Clix browser on an, as like an experimental uh, toggle for adding that support to Clix browser. Uh, and then I think it would be interesting to talk to them about opportunities for maybe doing something similar for IPFS. Uh, with, with, uh, if we can get uh, LibDWeb and IPFS working together again, really, really cool opportunity there. But he's been working on taking some of the changes that that uh, Arakli made to LibDWeb to be able to get it to perform better and be more stable, and taking those from the Gecko core patch that Arakli had done and putting those into the LibDWeb uh, ex experimental work here. Uh, he's he's hit a kind of a wall, so I just wanted to broadcast like for people that are either watching this meeting or joining this meeting. Uh, one, that, that some work's still happening there, which is which is great to see. And two, it's in support of an actual browser that's like shipping the feature, even in experimental mode. Still super important and great to, really great to support. Uh, but also if people are interested in hacking on some of this, um, if people are interested in like building up their Gecko development skills, doing things like Gecko debugging, uh, learning the ins and outs of web extension architecture and infrastructure in Firefox, uh, this is some place where it would be it would be great to be able to see more people with uh, more eyes on this um, and, and be able to keep this project uh, going because I think, you know, there's still an opportunity for us from an, you know, experimental browser standpoint 
in some types of support. And you know, one of the things that that I really want to maybe write up a grant around too is is doing an IPFS, getting IPFS implementation on top of DWeb back into shape, and doing experimentation on mobile with that combination. So I uh, just wanted to broadcast this out that this work's still happening and people still libdweb is still alive. People are still using it for real things. Yeah, it's and actually it's a pretty good uh, data point that it's a, like ongo ongoing development and this one is around protocol API because we got uh, a draft of uh, this. Uh, yeah, I. I, 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 I'm eager to wake up one day and be very good at multitasking or the, or during the call. So there, there's no awkward silence or anything while I open the right issue or PR. <laughs> uh, but this one is a protocol API implementation for basically browser extensions uh, for which runs on top of Gecko. Uh, here we got a grant to do basically the same thing for Chromium. So the, 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 the tricky part is to kind of, we probably should coordinate, uh, ensure those APIs do not differ too much, or ideally that those, because those are browser extension APIs for manifest V2. So in the perfect world, those, both cases would look similar. Uh, that's my dream, to have a single manifest for our browsers. It will never happen. But we probably, could, like both uh, people working on this grant and uh, people improving LibDeWeb could learn from each other, uh, compare notes. Uh, we, we could take the approach of uh, yet another standard and make a meta manifest <laughs> or a manifest transformer. There's this uh, XKCD about competing standards. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, pretty happy that uh, LibDeWeb uh, is still going. Um, speaking about web browsers, uh, what's new with Brave and the updates on local discovery? Uh, right now, uh, we I, I believe uh, the, the local discovery uh, grant uh, was signed by the contributor. Uh, I don't think the work started yet because uh, it took some time on our end and that person is working, uh, like had uh, other projects lined up. Uh, I'll probably check in this week, uh, get uh, like ETA when the work can start. I believe it was signed like last week or something. Uh, that's about local discovery. What's next uh, in a wider sense for Brave? Uh, I feel it's uh, safe to say, maybe I'll, <laughs> I'll make it more interesting by opening uh, a relevant issue. Uh, so the problem with uh, the existing experiment, which is embedded JS APFS in Brave, one is performance. It's JS, and no matter how much we try, it will never be as fast uh, in the chunking and other things uh, as Go uh, in this specific context. Because I know Alex will hunt me down and say that it's faster. I know it's faster, but not in the browser. <laughs> so uh, and, uh, that's the one, one problem. Another problem is that Google is deprecating uh, something they call Chrome apps. Uh, so Chrome apps will be deprecated, are like the, start, the deprecation process started and they plan to simply stop uh, supporting them in 2022. And that means those Chrome uh, APIs, which we got access, uh, which enable us to expose the CP port and other stuff. It's not like th those APIs will disappear in 2022, uh, but probably no one will maintain them. And if they break, no one will care apart from us because it's no longer will be used in upstream uh, Google products. Uh, it will be just a leftover in the Chromium code base. Uh, so it will be up to, let's say, vendors like Brave, who, if they decide if there's a value in maintaining them, the maintenance burden will be shifting away from like Google engineers 
to other organizations uh, which have commit access and commit rights to Chromium project. Uh, so both for those both reasons, we probably uh, not like immediately, but we will be moving away from embedded JSA PFS or to be more specific, we will add another option, another experiment. We will not remove embedded JSA PFS as long as those APIs are there and work. However, we will probably uh, move to more performant or more native uh, implementation. Uh, that could be uh, Go IPFS. Uh, Brave is uh, bundling uh, Tor binary right now, and they're fine with bundling Go IPFS. That requires additional orchestration. However, uh, we initial discussion we had around this were uh, that we could uh, reuse IPFS compiler as user interface for managing that node. So that will simplify implementation on, on their end. Uh, those are super early talks. Uh, if we decide to go that route, uh, basically if you start companion, if you enable that experiment in Brave settings, uh, which you can do here like this. Uh, so we probably could have we, this power button, which enables and disables companion in the browser. It would also like start and stop, uh, uh, like in the initial proof of concept that would be that one additional API that we need to make that happen. Uh, so that's like plan, plan A. Uh, and plan B is if Rust IPFS turns out uh, to be uh, ready, uh, that, that depends, like timelines uh, are still uncertain, but it's possible that if we have this like native protocol handler API and the Rust IPFS is good enough, just because we don't need like entire Go IPFS array implementation. We just need to be able to connect to IPFS network and get specific CID. Uh, that's basically it. Like everything else we can uh, do in companion and we don't need all the APIs and stuff like that. So those are, uh, th that's the, pla the option B. And right now we are in, uh, we are sort of like trying to evaluate what's the timeline, what's the complexity for each. Uh, it's not, it's not even they uh, exclude each other, but we probably don't want to do, make those efforts to overlap. Uh, maybe that one will happen f first and then we'll, when the Rust IPFS, assuming it will land later, we may uh, switch to that. Uh, that's the landscape. Not sure if it's useful or if it's uh, uh, answering the question, but uh, that, that's the, the current situation. For now, uh, we will improve companion for sure. Note that companion is still using old libraries before async iterators refactor. So the next, like in the Q2, uh, when we switch to those, uh, this embedded JSAPFS node will for sure be much more performant than this is, it is right now. So that will be like immediate uh, win for uh, users of that. Um, yeah, any questions for this one? Nope, just looking forward to seeing some of this happen. Um, uh, now that we've kind of got beyond some of the other, the other high priority fires, um, it's exciting to see us be able to kind of approach this problem, these challenges again and, and get some of these changes shipped. Uh, I actually, the the protocol handler bit, I did, I poked to Agalia again. So hopefully we can get some movement there in Q2 on the protocol handler dev ramp. And like, like every every single little one, one of these bits will, each one of these are little, little pieces of that bigger puzzle that start to reinforce each other. But it's just, yeah, it, it takes a while. Yeah, definitely it would be useful to, to get some feedback on the PR draft I created. Uh, if, uh, especially if it's anything is missing. I, I, uh, on purpose, I did not like to do the full brain dump there. I just was trying to be very uh, respectful about time. <laughs> Someone will be uh, spending on reading that. So if anything is missing, uh, yeah, send them my way. And the next one is Oprah. The release yes. is coming. Yes, release is coming soon. Uh, the, uh, I think there's one one final issue we're still waiting to hear back from, uh, but we're close enough that 
the uh, my my P zero by the end of this week is to draft a blog post. So I'll I'll uh, share it with the folks here to be able to get feedback on on that. Um, but things are things are looking good right going out in the next version. Other than that, no 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 more updates from my own. Cool. I, I, I muted myself, so <laughs> um, uh, it, it will be exciting, especially uh, that it will go uh, like ship with this origin isolation out of the box. Uh, so that's a small step, but it's uh, setting the proper precedent that when the support ships, it's not like botched, it's uh, like respecting the web security model. And I feel that's uh, sending a good signal. For, for the next vendor who will do something similar. Um, we are at the end of the agenda. There's one highlight, highlight which is related to the notarization, but the, there's a new release of IPFS desktop. Uh, main feature is uh, uh, synchronization of new languages. I, 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 I kind of went with short sync lo locals, but actually we've added many new languages. Uh, so it's like both uh, the translations, but you should, the, the, you should the, add, the, add those, add that list to the release notes. Yeah, I usually do. I, I was just like disappointed in myself that I did not spend time to highlight those new languages because those are uh, th those were added here. So unless someone has a, that local set in their system, they will not notice anything. But if you are uh, speaker and your system is in the, one of those languages, now we speak your uh, language, uh, more or less. Uh, and it works again in, on Debian then. Uh, there were issues with uh, sandboxing of Chromium. Chromium is like, IPFS desktop is built in Electron. Uh, with Electron, Electron is basically uh, built on top of Chromium and Chromium made some ch changes uh, about the default mode or some like the default M maybe that's a wrong uh, description uh, no one made uh, specific changes it was just like the security model in De uh, Debian and security model uh, that was picked by Chromium team do not work together and we had to uh, come up with a workaround uh, yeah and notarization um, that's it. If there's any topic you want to discuss, let me know. Now is a good time. Uh, I think the new version of Chromium has WebNFC API available as an origin trial. So uh, we should probably get going on the WebNFC uh, libp2p transport immediately so that people can hold their phones together and have the P2P work. That would be yeah. pretty sweet. Yeah, it's like, it's great for signaling. It's great for exchanging like multi exactly. other, mu like multi others are not just like strings of text. Those can be represented in very small, compact binary form. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. You, you, yeah. You, you pique my interest. <laughs> it's cool for, for discovery and to exchange stuff immediately. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, like someone could like even start a hotspot on the fly and just use it for very for for, for local network collaboration stuff too. Like yeah, or the uh, like mobile research happening behind the scenes right now. Uh, some idea like this unlocks a lot of ideas that were like pie in the sky for for some time, and right now, if this lands and we will land. Most, most of, uh, if something gets to the origin trial stage, it often uh, ships, then it does not. Yeah, but I, I feel like um, one of the factors in stuff like this actually shipping is people doing experimentation, building out use cases, and providing feedback on whether the IP, API met the need. So maybe this is another, another thing to write a dev grant proposal for. Yeah, it's for sure a whole work would be or this to, file, file maybe we should file an issue anyway no matter what as a request feature request 
Oh yeah, like I for I for sure will will add it to multiple issues. <laughs> Yes, it's uh, yeah. It, it's very it's very good to to broadcast that it's uh, it's a possibility. People will experiment with this. Super cool. I'm I'm kind of curious. Like, is there any precedent for something that is a specialized API for an initial like peer discovery, but doesn't actually do a whole transport? So, like WebNFC, for example, would be something that we might support for that initial connection or peer discovery, but isn't actually what we would use for a transport. Yeah, for uh, we have, uh, I think only bootstrap in the, yeah, in the random walk from the DHT, which are discovery and not transport. Basically, it just needs to uh, com be compliant to the interface discovery. We, we are also, we also tried uh, the web Bluetooth a while ago, but at the time, uh, they had issues uh, regarding transmitting uh, the type of uh, arbitrary data. They only allowed us to transmit data according to the type of data that they were expecting. And at the time, we couldn't do the discovery where it might have changed again. It was a long time ago. Awesome. I, I love doing the archaeological spelunking in these repos. Like, these, these, these conversations have been had before long, long ago. You're muted. What's happening with me today? <laughs> I usually have got to the, like, the keyboard shortcut, so I'm pretty efficient with this, but today uh, I was just m m uh, mentioning that it's like a testament how the how slow some things on the web move, change, evolve. Uh, but it's pretty useful, even like documenting it and looking back uh, to understand that it's not happening in one day, week, or quarter. It's a pretty long process. But this is super. Yeah, long. we kind of we talked a little bit. We talked a little bit about that. I would love to be do some writing about that as well. Like. Uh, about our strategy in terms of how you support long running, uh, long running like technology arcs that happen in standards process, how you can accelerate or decelerate them uh, in ways based on input feedback or other parallel side tracks of, of work. Um, and then how sometimes they can be uh, rendered in, in entirely, entirely obsolete by another totally out of band innovation or industry level change that'll happen. And how, like in, in the work that we're doing, we have to kind of do all three of those a little bit. We just keep pushing some of these balls forward. Sometimes it's from the side, sometimes it's from behind. Um, sometimes it's totally out, out of band altogether and something new shows up that we didn't expect. You are muted again. <laughs> Uh, I, I was uh, I was mentioning that if we look back, we have like already multiple examples of that. Uh, the way we tried to figure it out how signed and, and bundle HTTP exchanges fit in like IPFS ecosystem, like what how IPFS could uh, lever uh, leverage that, or or how IPFS could be used in that ecosystem. Uh, it's it was like our original trial. I believe it's like shipped this year or at the end of the last year. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's important. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's for sure important to, to IPFS be part of uh, those conversations, even if we finally don't decide it's a good match for some reason. Uh, it's very important to, uh, to be part of that conversation. Um, I, this week we got uh, local and offline uh, call which is happening uh, right after this call uh, so unless there are like very good questions or topics for the next eight minutes I propose we take uh, like five to six minutes back uh, before the next call
I, I can't join that one, but I, I would love to hear if there are interesting topics related to the work that we're doing. I do have just one quick question, if you don't mind. Um, is there a, I know that there's the IRC channels. Is there a certain place that you guys you know, collaborate or discuss other than like the IPFS IRC channel? Uh, there is IPFS-dev, uh, which is more, more like technical, uh, mostly because the IPFS one is, it's always like a wall of text and IPFS-dev is more about people who actually build or are discussing technical details. So uh, it's on Freenode, it's also on Matrix. Uh, and there are discussion forums on discuss IPFS IO, but those are usually like less, uh, less technical. Okay. I don't see a lot of traffic on there, but I guess there's just not a lot of traffic on it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's also, uh, I believe leap P2P IRC channel. Um, yeah, there is a hashtag uh, leap P2P IRC channel and there is also the forum. I think the leap P2P forum is getting more active uh discussed yeah discuss star liquid feeder io it's mostly used for uh, uh, people asking questions yeah okay thanks i know you guys wanted to end early i have lots of other questions but we'll wait till next week <laughs> awesome all right uh see you next week then Bye, Bye. Bye.